So we've had a drama. The uh, it ran away. It had a full blown run away. It was running on its own, uh, running on its own crankcase for uh, for a little bit of time there. The only thing I can put it down to is uh, our injector pump. Now these injector pumps run off a cam lobe inside the uh, inside the crankcase there, and uh, as you see, your oil levels chock a block full which is more than I put in it and um, you see it's leaked some out that's how much was in there it's um, I reckon it's leaking out of the injector out here into the uh... yeah so from from the injector out into the uh, crankcase oil so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take this line off take this injector out and have a look at it the injector pump injector pump sorry Injectors at the top, pumps down the bottom. Because yeah, as you can see, we're getting a little constant flow of uh, oil rolling out of old mate, and there shouldn't be. So we won't start this again. I would love to start it and let it run away a little bit on camera for you. If you don't know what a diesel runaway is, it's when it runs on its crankcase oil, and and or anything that's getting into the air intake. And uh, it's a situation where um, it goes poorly normally most of the time. Um, you turn the, I turned the fuel off the other day in my situation. It didn't change. It actually revved higher because the air-fuel ratio would have changed to uh, a less rich air-fuel ratio. Even though it was still boiling oil in the bottom of the uh, crankcase and eating it through the crankcase ventilation. This intake port is actually part of the front of the case here as you see it's like one piece through there so i'm assuming it vents from the bottom all the way to the top up here only an assumption just a guess but you imagine 150 odd 200 degree oil temperature that stuff's very combustible and it wants to burn so to pull our injector out i believe we just have to do one two three i've got a new injector on the way uh, <laughs> they're 36 bucks so we're probably not going to mess with it a great deal unless it's just an o-ring and then we might try and fix it and just get it going. But could you imagine if that had a ran away with diesel in there? It would have been an absolute nightmare. She would have just grenaded. So uh, we need a 10 mil, a wrench and a, uh, and a hose. Hose on there is the supply line. Let's turn that supply line off. It does have a tap up under there. So we'll shut that off and uh, we'll pull this out. Alright, we've got the three of these undone. So yeah, I couldn't believe how cheap a uh, injector pump was. Try not to kink that, because that'll leak on me as soon as I put it back together, no doubt. Two. Well, that one's got a little spring tension on it. That makes sense, doesn't it? Is it going to come out and shoot me? Probably not. No. Pressure runs out at the end of the screw. That's why they're as long as they are. There's your injector pump. Turn our fuel line back on over here. How can we test that? Because it's probably only at back pressure. It's only leaking when it's against the, you know, three or four thousand psi that it sends up to the injector. 
We'll just take it off and see if we can't pull it apart. All right, we had a little diesel engine runaway. Notice there's an injector not in its home. Injector pump. This little guy, I reckon's leaking because my oil stinks like vegetable oil and it keeps overfilling all by itself. And the other day it ran away, blowing black chaff out of it like crazy and it wouldn't shut down when I turned the fuel off. So we ended up popping the decompression lever. See a problem? Ah! Yeah, I'll get to clean that up now. We need the vacuum extractor to suck that mess up. So she's drastically over full of oil. And uh, yeah, I believe it's all come from the fuel pump. All right guys, so we've got our new injector. It is this brand. Don't know what brand that is, but it suits a 186F, which is us. Doesn't say much on there. Ah, it came really quick. We got it off eBay, which is pretty cool. So now we've got to take that fuel needle cover plate off this one, take the fuel hose off this one, put it on that one. And there we go. Face it the other way, so hopefully the hose will reach. Annoying if it doesn't. Unless it's just done up in there. No, it's in there. So, the other thing we've got to do is use our Vivo extractor to suck the um, engine oil out of there. So I've got to grab an airline for that. We'll get all that engine oil out now. Uh, we've got some fresh Penrite 1550 oil to put in there and um, then yeah we're gonna run it for maybe half an hour and check and make sure it doesn't over overfill overfill the uh, thing so I didn't get the old uh, I think you call them a bucket where it rubs on the cam lobe I didn't get that out of the existing head I need a little magnet pickup tool to get that out but they just come off the end of the pump so uh, we'll make sure that everything's fine, but yeah, just something to note if you see this spare part in the video, that's why. So I'm gonna get this snugged down. Um, it doesn't require a huge deal of torque to hold it in. You kind of just want to do it evenly. Just want to work them, work them down and in. Well, I'm gonna do this and I'll go grab a airline. Oh, wrong size, wrong size. The 10 millimeter. You kind of want to wind them in like that. Then we're gonna give it give it fuel, turn the fuel on, and um, wait until we get fuel to come out the actual injector nozzle. And once we've got it out uh, at the pump nozzle, once we've got pump injector, we should be able to put this one on, and it should start relatively easily after that. Um, I didn't realise how much splatter came out of the exhaust when the uh, thing ran away. It appears that it may have killed four of my lithium batteries now. Um, if you're following along, I had uh, some lithium batteries on the charger when this did its run away. Yeah, anyway, let's clean up some of this mess. And you get some oil absorbing mats. But, uh, I'll snug this down, I'll get an airline and we'll vacuum extract. All the oil out of there. We'll give it some fresh oil again because it's uh, only had fresh oil about 10 hours ago. Okay, so a little trick if you don't have a funnel. Those Willow Strain made fun um, funnels for the jerry cans go straight on these oil drums. Very handy for little motors like this. Check our oil level. Remember, our oil level is the thing that's going to. About three quarters. It's beautiful, clean, fresh oil in there. Okay, I've got the injector down here just connected. It's not actually done up, it's loose still. Um, let's stick the jump starter on it. Give it a wind over until we get a continuous flow of fuel out of there. Just grease it a little bit too. That way we can see if there's any 
fresh leaks. One of the best things for cleaning off grease and goo is literally um, dishwashing liquid. You get it from Bunnings, it's called Exxon or something like that. Not Exxon. XE or something, I don't know. It's like a dollar twenty or a dollar fifty for a litre bottle of it. It makes awesome car wash too or truck wash. And biodegrades, that crap. Okay, jump starter. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to do, but we're just gonna wind it over. Um, with the fuel on but the decomp open. And see if we can video that at the same time. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. Prop you up somewhere. So decomp down. If there's an airlock in this pipe up to that fuel filter because the pipe might be too long and uh, see if we got fuel down here we should have fuel down here not much that a sec to get running through the filter and then I'll put it back together and we'll try again. 